Okay, so I wanted to pick up on this slide because I don't think I did a great job of covering it last night. Um, towards the end of the lecture, I was a little bit uh, tired. Uh, not that I'm not tired now, but um, I just wanted to give you a, like a decent enough recap of the substitution and income effects because um, I think I'm going to trailed off towards the end there. Okay, so let's say you have a price decrease, okay, and uh, it's a price decrease in one of the goods. Okay, what's that going to do? That's going to shift your budget constraint out. So if it's a price decrease on the x-axis, good. You're going to move further on the x-axis. If it's a price decrease on the y-axis, good. You're going to move further up on the y-axis. Okay. So I'll show you what I mean. Where's my whiteboard? Here we are. No. I don't want that. I don't know why that did that. For some reason, selecting the marker brought me all the way to the top, so that's fun. So let's go the back to the bottom. All right. So here's our graph. So if this is original price or original budget constraint, and the price decreases on the x-axis, okay. So the budget constraint should shift out. If the price decreases on the y-axis. The budget constraint should shift up. Okay. So this or this, depending on which it is. Okay. I'm going to erase these because these are gross. But what ends up happening is your budget constraint is going to shift out in one way or the other, whether it's on the x or the y axis. And what that does is it creates uh, additional purchasing power. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the slide. So that increases consumer purchasing power. It means overall, regardless of whether you're consuming good X or good Y more, you're consuming a higher consumption bundle, okay? A consumption bundle that gets you on a higher indifference curve, a higher utility, okay? So the income effect, because consumer uh, purchasing power increase, should increase uh, both goods, right? So uh, if they're normal goods, I should say. Uh, which we, we, we've been presuming to this point because we said that uh, you like both goods, right? Um, so if, uh, if they're normal goods, uh, you should see the income effect drive up the quantity demanded, okay? But on the other hand, if one of the goods, uh, one of the goods has a price decrease, okay, you might consume more of uh, that good, but the good that is now relatively more expensive, you'll consume less of. Okay, so that's the substitution effect. So the substitution effect will increase the quantity demanded of the good whose price decreased, and it will decrease the quantity demanded of the good whose price increased. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at over here. Okay, so if we're looking at this one here, so we went from, uh, I think this was the original budget constraint A, the one with A on it. And there was a price increase on the x-axis good, shifting in the budget constraint, okay, which led to an overall new optimal uh, consumption bundle of C, okay. But the movement from A to C can be decomposed into a substitution effect and decomposed into in an income effect, okay. And the substitution effect is what happens when you keep the price ratio constant um, and you stay on the same indifference curve. Okay, and the income effect is what happens when uh, the price ratio changes and, uh, wait, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. No, no, no I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was right the first time. Price rate, uh, substitution effects what happens when you keep the price ratio constant and um, you stay on the same indifference curve. Okay, so that's the move from A to B. And then the income effect is what happens when the overall consumer purchasing power decreases and you're keeping the same uh, price ratio um, as the, uh, the the dotted line basically okay so the by the same price ratio I should, I should be more clear uh, hold on, st where's my mouse here there we go okay so this dotted line has the same price ratio as the new price, okay? So the substitution effect is the change that happens when you keep the same price ratio as the new price, but 
you maintain the um, you maintain the indifference curve. Okay, so um, this is just the the substitution from uh, beer to samosas that yields the same utility. Okay, so it's on the same indifference curve. Then if I were to scale that down so that the purchasing power matters, okay, so basically we're moving parallel from this indifference curve downwards to uh, the actual uh, the actual budget constraint that uh, has the new uh, price, okay? Uh, the new price of the x-axis good, basically. So this is the real budget constraint. This is a real budget constraint, and this is a fake budget constraint that we made in order to decompose the effects. But if I scale this down, basically what I'm doing is, uh, it's essentially I'm keeping the same price ratio from here to here, from the this uh, this line to this line, but the income is decreasing. Okay. So if you uh, essentially essentially what we're doing is we're decreasing the uh, the y-intercept here. So the the whole equation would be the same, except the y-intercept would drop. Okay, so that is essentially capturing the decrease in income. Okay, so these two equations, if we were to uh, write them out, so I'm talking about the budget constraint here and the budget constraint here, which, uh, come on. So in the lecture slides, I referred to them as BC2, which again was the budget constraint after the price increase in the x-axis good. And we have BC, uh, I called it sub-effect, which is the budget constraint um, keeping the the new price ratio but on the old indifference curve okay and bc2 would be like i1 equals uh, p x times x plus p y times y and then BC sub effect. The only difference is I'm changing I1 to I2. It's a higher income level. Okay. Would be equal to PX times X plus PY times Y. Okay. So if, if I were to put numbers in here in place of the variables, it would be like. 100 is my old income level. Uh, the price is 5 times beer plus uh, 10 times samosas. Let's keep with the same the same um, prices I gave before, though. I think it was 40 and 10. So 10 for a beer, 40 for a samosa. So I'm going to change this to 10. 10 for a beer. And 40 for a samosa. Okay. So the BC sub effect would have an income that looks a little something like this. E period G, 200 equals 10 times beer plus. 40 times samosas. And then finally, BC1 is what we already had. Um, so that would be the original budget constraint that we started with, which would be 100 equals 10 times beer plus 20 times samosas. Okay. So the price increased from 20 to 40 in this example, which led to a change from uh, this black budget constraint here to this budget constraint here. And then in order to decompose it, we created a fake budget constraint that keeps the same slopes 
10 and 40. Okay, the same uh, the same price ratio. Uh, but is still touching this indifference curve. Okay. Specifically, it's still tangent to that indifference curve. Okay. So by virtue of going from this one to this one, essentially all we're doing is decreasing the actual income um, to what it actually is. This is like a fake income that um, just allows us to get back to this budget constraint. And I'm not going to ask you to solve for what those income levels are or whatever. Um, I might ask you to graph them, though. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right. So... Let's do the corollary. So uh, that's actually just what we did. So when a price increases, okay, so that's the the drop here from this old bu this budget constraint to the new budget constraint. Consumer purchasing power decreases, right? And we can see that because we're consuming at a lower indifference curve, okay. Um, if we were on the same indifference curve, we'd have to increase the income. Okay, the income effect causes quantity demanded to decrease as long as the good is normal. Okay, So that would be represented as this drop here from B to C. And the substitution effect causes the increase when the price increases, uh, which causes the quantity of good demanded to decrease. So one good is going to increase and the other good is going to decrease, essentially. Um, so the good that had the price increase will drop in quantity demanded. The good that has the did not have the price increase will increase. Okay. Uh, so that's all I really want to spend on the income and substitution effects. Like I said, this is kind of a weird topic. Um, so you know, if you don't get it the first time around, that's fine. Um, uh, I'll uh, put a practice problem up on the uh, the final extra credit. Um, so you can you can practice it before the final. And then um, you can see it. You might see it in the final. I'm still undecided on whether or not I'm going to actually ask a question on this. But it's important enough to to go over and at least um, be a little familiar with. Okay. So uh, let's move on to deriving a demand curve. 